Boatworks today is sponsored by Total Boat and Alexia Yacht Coatings, as well as supported by the generosity from the beautiful folks over on Patreon. Thank you so much. So welcome back to the shop. It has been a wild week. Uh, long story short, Thanksgiving, we got three feet of snow, 50 mile an hour winds, no power for a day, day and a half. A day and a half of clearing snow and I'm finally able to get back up into the shop. So let's get busy. That worked surprisingly well. Now, if you weren't able to make out what I was using here, this is a, a variable speed die grinder. And I've got, I don't know, I'm guessing here, it's about a half inch uh, bull nose bit on the tip here. Now, I understand that a lot of people probably may not have a die grinder on hand, but what you probably have a much better chance of having is a, is a Dremel. And I think that would work out just fine. Uh, the difference between the two, the, the Dremel might be a little bit more squirrely just because it's, it's gonna be spinning a lot faster and it's a lot lighter tool. It just doesn't have much mass to it. But I think either one is certainly able to get the job done. It'll beat the alternative of having to go in with a, uh, you know, like a sander or a grinder, take the glass off the top or off the head of the nut, and then try and dish out all around the nut so that you can get like a, a socket or a wrench on there. Certainly, either one of these options would certainly beat that. Uh, the only thing that I would say that you might want to look at, regardless if it's a die grinder or the Dremel, is try and find like a, a carbide bit Otherwise, what I suspect would probably happen if you're using like a high-speed steel or something like that is you'll get around one or two nuts and then you're essentially going to be spinning like a butter knife. I mean, it's just the, the any kind of ability to cut is just going to be worn down and gone. But carbide, on the other hand, this will last, it'll last the entire project and then probably five more. So a little, a little bit more expensive to get carbide, but I think it's 100% worth it. But with that out of the way, now, I actually have full access to all of the hardware. So now, time to switch gears, break out the socket set, and we gotta get all this hardware off. So out of the many kind of weird small things that just kind of piqued my interest, winches are one of them. Now, I've rebuilt a lot of different winches over the years, two-speed, three-speed, uh, self-tailing, manual, electric, you know, whatever. However, I've never quite seen one this simple. Normally, normally taking the drum off of a winch is a little bit of a pucker moment because there's usually needle bearings. It's like a, a sleeve of bearings that fit over this, uh, over this post. And that's what allows the drum to, you know, kind of spin freely without binding up when it's under load. This has no such thing. This was just literally metal on metal. And surprisingly, there's very little wear on here. Very interesting. Now, the other part that I found interesting is that, you know, this is, once you get down to the basics, you know, winches are very, very similar. You've got your paws here on a spring, and that's what clicks when you, when you turn the drum. Now, I'm gonna take my mic and set it right next to the winch here so you can hear this. Now, normally when you're, when you're trying to determine what the, the condition of a winch is, you, you turn the drum slowly, and what you're looking to hear is if the, the clicking of these paws are they, are they synchronized? Are they all clicking at the same time or is one kind of slightly delayed more so than the others? And again, you know, this is a 1970 boat. This has never been taken off. I don't think it's ever been serviced to be perfectly honest, uh, but check this out. All the paws are falling at the same time. There isn't any kind of a delay. Normally, you might be able to hear like, say, two, maybe even three of the paws kind of click at different times. Not so. These, these are all clicking at the same rate. 
Now, I'm not going to be reusing this winch at all, but if a person wanted to, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this. I mean, it would be good to go, obviously, come in, clean everything up, replace the springs, replace the pawls, although they don't look like they're worn all that much. A little bit. But for the most part, this could be salvageable. Surprisingly, for 54 years old, 55 years old. So getting the rest of this hardware off is going to be slow going, which is another way of saying it's going to be boring as hell to try and record and watch. So we're going to fast forward a little bit, bring it back when everything's done. Actually, ooh, let me try this. Here's where things are at. Uh, got, I think, a fair amount done. I was able to get the, uh, the cleats, the winches, some of the stanchion bases off, uh, the port lights, and... I don't know, I feel like there's a couple of other things that got, got ripped off as well. And it is later, about uh, like 6, 6.30 on Friday night. But I did have a question I wanted to run by. Uh, something to do with welding, because I've never welded anything in my life, and I just got a question. Okay, so I got two sets of chain plates. Aren't these cute little things here? But anyways, uh, overall, I think they are, they look like they're in good shape. Eh, a little dirty, but... All in all, I think they are in pretty good shape. I'm not seeing any indication that this boat had really ever been sailed hard. I mean, none of the none of the holes where the where the rigging came down, none of the holes are wobbled out. Uh, I'm not seeing any stress cracks at all on any of these chain plates. These are off the starboard side, and here's the ones off the port side. Again, same condition. Nothing's wallowed out. Uh, everything looks as it should. Now, here's the question that I had. Uh, the profile on these is so So this is the uh, the shrouds. So the the fore and aft shroud, the stay was this one, which was attached to the bulkhead. But the uh, the shrouds, they're two different pieces, and they you know you got your tang here, and it was welded on to this little angle piece here. Now what I'm not or what I'm unsure about is there's some discoloration right in here. It's almost like a copper color. Uh, to me, again, not knowing jack about welding or brazing or anything like that, but this doesn't really look like a weld. It's It's got that copper color, almost like it was is brazed, the right term. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not seeing any stress cracks, but I'm not quite sure if I even want to consider trying to reuse these chain plates. Well, my audio died. Or if I even want, if I want to try and, and reuse these, clean them up and salvage them, or if I just want to say, you know what, they're 55 years old, even though they look fine to my eyes, um, maybe it would be best just to have some new ones made. I'm not quite sure, but I would be interested to hear everybody's comments, especially anybody from anybody that has experience with welding. But anyways, on that note, I think I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, call it a week. I've got plenty of things opened up right at this point that it's going to keep me more than more than out of trouble for all of next week. Uh, all of the holes from everything that was taken off, you know, over the past week or so, uh, all those holes that need to get glassed over, filled, made, gone, to include the port lights on both the port and the starboard side. Uh, I understand why they put these fixed, you know, port lights in because they're cheap and they're quick. But why would you ever do that on a small boat? You have, you get no ventilation. So anyways, the, the, the port lights on, on the sides, they're getting glassed over and made gone because I'm going to put in some opening ones you know, when, uh, when that time comes. But all the deck hardware as far as the cleats, winches, um, stanchion bases, I'm tired. <laughs> they're all going to be gone because I seriously doubt anything is going to go back in the same place. And I'm not going to be using... Even if they do go back in the same place, I'm not going to reuse those that that hardware. So the mounting bases, the patterns are all going to be different anyway. So I've got a lot of holes to fill is the long way of saying that I've got more than enough to keep me busy all of next week. So on that note, I'm going to go ahead and button this week up right here. So as always, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found this interesting. And if you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Thank you in advance. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, specifically on the weld to the chain plates, uh, please leave those down below and I will be sure to follow up with you. And as always, I want to thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. Have a great post Thanksgiving. Hopefully you're all done with the food comas. Uh, and I will see you next week's video. This has been a Boatworks Today Projection.